Hey everyone, I just want to say, um, before we dig into this video, uh, I want to give you just a quick overview of what happened. I posted a video about uh, a little um, injury I had. I was out in the desert with some uh, friends uh, with our uh, UTVs. We all do it. It's a, kind of a fun thing around here. Um, <clears throat> kind of a rough day. A lot of uh, breakdowns and things like that. Uh, but uh, upon returning back to the parking lot, uh, Myself and my passenger, we avoided uh, a bit of a dust cloud that was being kicked up by some other riders and came along the top of this other access point to the parking lot. And there happened to be a very eroded out um, ditch, ravine, I don't know, couldn't see it. Uh, the, the surface looking across uh, the top of this thing, it just looked flat and it looked like a road. And we kind of just went straight down into it. So um, uh, my passenger suffered a few broken... Um, discs uh, in his thoracic uh, area of his back and um, me bruises little head stuff very sore neck things like that because we just we hit really really hard and uh, that was pretty much it so it kind of held up on a couple of things uh, so that's all that went on there uh, so everything's kind of getting back to normal but um, you got to watch this video all the way through to the end. Okay, it's long. I haven't put a long one up in a while, but there's a lot to explain here. So um, just kind of ride through it and um, enjoy, okay? Good morning. I know you guys are getting used to that now. I have something very special today. <laughs> It's always special. So, um, today I'm actually going to spend some time talking about Aerate. Now, there are three products that I'm very uh, proud of, uh, just from a developmental standpoint, and, and um, putting the ideas into action and how they've performed. Um, one would be the Aerate. Okay, that would be number one. The RGS and the Detach, those three. Um, and I really like them because they're unique. They're unique and they're game changers. And, and I feel pretty proud to have been able to make these happen. So I want to talk a little bit about the reason, um, show some soil, uh, and um, kind of the whole concept behind this. Now, in the years of working with humix and humic acids and in different forms um, uh, in original liquids that were being extracted uh, that, that were being sent to me as samples when I started, um, powders, um, raw form uh, and creating them into solution, um, jet milled, hammer milled, all of these different types of humates, the one thing was consistent across the board is was knowing that this is something that needed to be a part of every um, lawn program, no matter what. Now, uh, the big thing about that is humic is really not, a, it's not a standalone product, okay? And I'm talking about humic first before, before we get into this so that you understand where this came from. It works with whatever else it's with. It's just a, uh, a buffer, a chelator, a cleanser. Uh, you know, it, it goes through and takes whatever you combine it with and just makes it more available to the soil, more available to the plant, uh, to the roots. It gives some energy to microbes. Um, it's not food for them. It's just there's just an interaction that happens there. So over the years, and um, really it's years of adding that into a program, you see these changes, these sort of what seems like leaps and bounds. And then really in uh, soil science and geology, seeing soil change visibly in a certain amount of time, it, that is that is very fast. So as years have gone by and you know the humic has been a cornerstone of all the products that, that I have ever uh, focused my attention on creating, things started to become apparent um, and, it, and it was in these changes. Now this is leading up into aerate. Now, aerate is um, about 8% of a concentrate of uh, humic acid, humic acid that we react 
that is in this product and then it's actually reacted further to give it sort of that I don't know if, if anybody has played with it yet that sort of greasy feel that it's got it's very viscous so just from a uh, visible standpoint when you see the product and smell the product and feel the product you can tell that there is something different about it and to go sort of further back I'm going to jump kind of hopping around a little bit here the concept of a chemical type aeration is not new okay uh, the benefits of using humus to uh, in increase soil porosity is pretty well known um, there have been a lot of companies that have done chemical aeration products with varying degrees of success okay uh, no, no judgment to them whatsoever uh, because it's it's a wonderful concept and it needs to it needs to happen this is you know we, we just had to dial it in from a scientific side on how to number one make it the most effective two create a bit of a lasting result three show that something is happening not just say it which is really important to see a visual result um, make it very easy to use and then after all that's done figure out how to properly market it into uh, the universe really so th those are kind of the challenges about it now um, if anybody's done any research or gone on and looked at other you know videos um, Matt uh, Martin did a wonderful breakdown of aerate versus some other things using sort of active ingredients and breaking it down so I'm not gonna whiteboard it that's been done so um, check out the grass factor for that you can do a little search on the aerate and get really scientific with it which is cool so jumping back into what I'm talking about with the humic now we see these leaps and bounds and changes over the years well my thought was is there a way to accelerate those so that you can see those things that I was talking about a few minutes ago that visual result out of the turf um, the change in the soil um, you know really be able to simply quantify that data and it kind of just came to me one day about how we processed our humic and, and in reaction and thinking about how when we're breaking these you know humic bonds away from this carbon and moving it up into solution well why can't we recreate that in soil and that's really where this came from is by upping that reactivity so that when it hits soil surfaces it starts to pull some of those metals and chelate it to the plant it starts to release some of that calcium up into the plant it starts to release tied up phosphorus and because it, it works in the soil like a somewhat of a, a caustic agent in a sense okay yeah, you know I have companies out there that use this initially just to clean their tanks and pumps which is wild when you take if you've seen this it's dark it's black it doesn't really make any sense but it goes and starts to break down things that are tied up even in a spray type solution um, when you have caked on items so it does the same thing in the soil when that happens you're creating all of this extra space it's it's breaking little bonds creating space breaking bonds creating space all over the place so you get that air movement hence the air eight now granted that's a little bit of a marketing fun push uh, light bulb on my side because it's eight percent humic and then obviously air and eight and you know I, I felt pretty proud of that too doesn't matter so I'm gonna take a sip of coffee and I'm gonna pull some grass up that I've got sitting next to me so I have another special guest star uh, right here on a shovel so this is some soil and some grass uh, from my backyard okay um, if you can really get in there tight you'll see the roots coming through this is a full spade here I'm going to pull this back around hit that bell that lets you know that it's real these are all top end roots forming down breaking through this soil surface now this is dry and it was intentionally dry uh, it has not been watered in this particular section for six or seven days temperatures have been in the 90s uh, humidity has been like 21 percent so i really wanted to see how much it was going to dry out um, so looking down here coming across we have the shovel we got about eight or nine inches of soil out and you can see the root development and if you can hear that just how crumbly 
than loose this is. Now this got a little bit more packed in because it really dried out. See? And this is a little clay layer that's in here. Near the top we've got decomposition happening down through this zone. It's, I mean, this is just mainly a big ball of roots and I'm gonna take this and sort of flush it off in some water and uh, kind of try to give you an idea of what this actually looks like. But see, we've got all the way down deep the ability for the soil to breathe, okay? And the roots and the water and everything kind of follow along these root lines, which is what we're trying to do, is drive everything down further and further into the soil. And that's really what you're going to get as a benefit out of the aerate product. I got some pretty good sized roots hanging down here. This is a, it's a good chunk of good chunk of turf. Pretty healthy, pretty green, you know, it's just kind of a little cut right in the middle. So I'm gonna do a little little wash off while I'm talking to you here. About a little a little thing of water and it's going to dip that in there. So the one thing to note about um, aerate is that his pH is super high. And there's some people that have concern about that. Like, well, isn't that going to uh, change my soil pH if I already have high pH soils? And no, you need to think about it like we're putting ounces of material out per thousand feet, gallons per acre. Figure 16 pounds of material total per acre, maybe as much as 24 pounds per acre. When you do a soil test and when you're checking pH and running things all the way across the board, you're dealing with a soil area that uh, is based on, I'd say, well, parts per million, six inches deep, two million pounds, okay? This 16 to 24 pounds of material is not going to make a difference in a liquid. So just think about that for a second. All it's really going to do is have a chemical reaction to other items in the soil and help to create more space. Now, this would way, be way, way easier if I could have done this with a hose or something, but it just would have been messy. And I'm just trying to get some of the soil to release off of the roots, but there's so many roots it just wants to hold on to everything. So we can just sort of break that apart. You know, I'll tell you what, there's really not a whole lot um, more fun for me than just playing in the mud like this. This is freaking fantastic. And we're just sort of freeing up some of these roots as they go down. But now, since it's had just a little bit of water, just a tiny bit, look at how much softer this has just instantly become because the water was able to, like, immediately break through this. <sighs> yep, that's mud. So this is what we're trying to do here. Applying aerate, help drive the roots down a little bit more. As they go down, they create more pathways for water and air. Uh, you'll start to see more life in the soil, more earthworms, things like that. People who really pay attention to their alive soil, that, that's one thing that they always notice is earthworms come back. So let's roll this real quickly into aeration and overseeding time. Because it's funny um, about how many questions come up regarding, you know, well, can I do this uh, instead of mechanical aeration? Of course. Okay? You can. Um, it works really well and, and I want to explain something and hopefully everybody starts to get this uh, and it kind of it goes to the same thing as pre-emergence too. When you core aerate, aerate a lawn, core aerate a lawn, you take your nice flat surface like this and then you, you poke a hole in it like this and then you go over here and you poke another hole in it like this and then you poke another hole in it like this and then this, there you go, now you've got your poked hole lawn. It's a poked hole lawn. Um, now you overseed, okay? I don't know if anybody's ever noticed this. Now, if you had no grass on your lawn before overseeding, it wouldn't be called overseeding, it would be seeding, all right? But see, if you had no grass and you did that and you put your seed out, the seed that would land in these aeration holes would probably germinate sooner and you would have sort of a peppered look across the lawn. That's a probably. When you're overseeding and you've got a stand of fescue or, or whatever it is that you're coming over the top of, you have seed that's dispersing across the entire flat surface of your lawn. You have certain areas where there's holes. When the grass germinates, it germinates everywhere, evenly. So think about that for a second. 
what's the point of the aerator? If a seed will germinate anywhere, because it's protected, it's covered, and it has moisture, then is the aeration portion really necessary for seed germination? Big answer there is absolutely not. So that's a hard concept for people to grasp because they've just been told this is how you just do it. You aerate and overseed. Reality is when you aerate, one of the best things you could ever do is cover the holes back up, okay? So in golf course greens, um, turf management, you, you would like aerify a green and put sand down through it because the sand would continue to help with the drainage and keep things open. And then doing that in lawn care. Now, if you're having something top dressed, again, that's a different story. We're leading into different things. So literally, you can seed, spray aerate down. It'll germinate in a few days, a week, just as beautiful as you've ever seen before. And the water will be flowing the way that it's supposed to. So I just want to go ahead and throw that out there. Um, so feel free, hit me in the comments. Um, the area products being used in every round in a lot of places, just because it works extremely well and you see the green up and it's, it just, it just works. So comments, questions, send them to me. Um, I'll do my best to answer them. And, um, Hey, weekend's coming. Have fun on your lawn. Talk to you soon.